By age 24, Harry S. Patton was overseeing 50 people working in six offices for the Kirby Corporation because of his remarkable success as a salesman. In 1961, he took a job with American Central Company developing rural lakefront property. In 1964, Harry formed his own company, the Patton Realty Corporation. The company grew through a series of partnerships and Patton Corporation went public. In 1986, Patton Corporation was the top performing stock on the New York Stock Exchange. In 1995, Harry sold his remaining stock in the company and has since launched private family ventures under the umbrella of Patton Family Companies. Harry's the leading buyer and seller of rural, recreational, and timberland in this country. Their family company, which includes his son and two grandsons, is one of the largest landowners in the country. It sounds like Harry stopped selling and started buying. It's important for kids to visualize who they're going to be when they get older. And as they go through life, they're going to become that person. My dad had lost a lot of money and had suffered greatly in the Depression and was kind of working his way out of the Depression. When I was born in 1936, he sold made-to-measure suits. And he traveled the counties throughout New Hampshire and the small areas, and his customers in those days were the minister who needed a suit, the undertaker, I guess the banker. And he'd leave for work on a Monday morning. He didn't have lunch until he made a sale. He put that pressure on himself, so he had great determination. But my dad got uh, had a, an accident, and he couldn't work for three years. And so that put a real strain on the family finances because in those days, there were no safety nets. So I'm not sure how my parents made it, but they squeaked through. On Christmas morning, sure enough, I got a whole bunch of new trucks. And several days later, when I'm playing with my trucks, I happened to turn one over and realize that these weren't brand new trucks. These were something that had been painted. They painted those trucks up to make them look new. But as they, as they look back on it, they were painted with love. They couldn't afford to buy anything. My dad thought I ought to be an entrepreneur at an early age. And I decided that we'd have uh, 12 chickens. And my job was to go collect the eggs every morning and sell the eggs in the neighborhood. And after the debts were paid, uh, my next door neighbor's dog came in and killed my chickens which was an absolute disaster and a tremendous first business failure. I went to the University of New Hampshire and um, I had a full scholarship in my sophomore year in college. I got married had a, and soon after that we had a family on the way. And all through college I sold uh, Kirby vacuum cleaners. I'd go to school in the morning, uh, come home in the afternoon, uh, hit the road, knock on doors, make appointments. Ended up staying with the Kirby vacuum cleaner business for probably five or six years after school. I wanted to be in business for myself and uh, I searched all over the Northeast looking for a piece of property that I could afford to buy. Finally found one. I could buy it with $15,000. I was in business. I owned a piece of land and away we went. I still discover and, and see it every day. His drive and his determination, how much he loves to inspire and help other people to become successful in their lives. You talk about the American dream, well, look at me, I don't have a reason to be sitting here except for the American dream. A racial elder association member, Harry S. Patton. Presenting the Horatio Alger Award is Association Chairman Emeritus H. Wayne Hunting. I'm thrilled to be here tonight, and I'm really truly honored to receive this award. Now tonight we've gathered here to recognize and honor those who have achieved great success. I've always been fascinated by the idea of success. And when I was a boy, I read many of the Horatio Alger stories, and I discovered one common theme in each book, the fictional kids who faced their challenges the characters who literally went from rags to riches all had the same characteristics. Later in life as a businessman, 
I made a study of success because I wanted to know why some employees were successful and some were not. I interviewed hundreds of successful people from all walks of life, and this is what I learned. First, you must refuse to fail. You must work hard, develop a discipline, and always feel that you can give back. Now, that's what my Horatio Alger award winners all have done, and that's what you Horatio Alger scholars are in the process of doing. I think there is one thing that all of the members of Horatio Alger will agree upon, is that the American dream is very much alive. God bless America, and thank you.